Hello again everyone, welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I am going to show you guys how to build a NAS using Open Media Vault in the Argon 1 M2 case, which allows you to attach an SSD to a Raspberry Pi. And this is the unit that I decided to build right here. I wanted to have an Open Media Vault instance in my home lab here so that I always have it available to test on. But I figured if I'm going to be building one, I may as well show you guys how I built it. So I recorded the entire process. And in this video, if you want to create your very own Open Media Vault server just like this, you'll be able to do so. I'm going to show you the entire process. I'm going to show you an unboxing of this case. I'll then show you how to put it together. I'll also go over how to install Raspberry Pi OS as well. And then we'll tweak Raspberry Pi OS. And then finally, I will show you how to install Open Media Vault. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you wanted to create a new NAS for your home lab, then this is the video for you. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what do you need to get started if you want to mimic the build that I put together? Honestly, all you really need is a Raspberry Pi, an SD card, and a power cable. Now it's definitely preferred to have a case though. Not only does it protect your Raspberry Pi, but the Argon 1 case looks pretty cool. And that's the case that I'm going over in this video. You don't have to use the Argon 1 case, but it is something that I recommend if you don't already have a favorite case to use. And again, in this video, I'm going to show you how to put this case together. Now the best feature of this case, in my opinion, is that it allows you to attach an M2 SSD and mount it inside the case along with the Raspberry Pi. So I think this case is a great fit for what we're trying to do today. To be fair though, you don't need an SSD straight away and you can always add that later. If you don't actually attach an SSD or some sort of additional storage to the Raspberry Pi, then you'll be stuck using the SD card for your storage and there's nothing wrong with that, but you'll have additional overhead, so keep that in mind. And some people can just start with an SD card and then add the SSD later. So you don't have to order every component all at once. But I will have a shopping link in the description down below. It'll contain all of the components that I'm using today. So if you want to order the same components that I'm using in this video, you'll be able to grab them from that link. And doing so also helps support the channel, and I really appreciate it. In regards to the SSD though, the case I'm using supports M2 SSDs, not NVMe. So just keep that in mind if you are ordering a different SSD than the one that I am using in this video. I also recommend that you hardwire your finished build with Ethernet for faster transfer speeds. But since the Pi has built-in Wi-Fi, you can use that instead if you want to make it a portable NAS. Just keep in mind that you will have better transfer speeds over Ethernet but if that doesn't matter so much to you, then again, building a portable and wireless Raspberry Pi based NAS is actually pretty cool too. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the build. In order for this build to work, you're going to need an operating system for your Raspberry Pi. I decided to go with Raspberry Pi OS and you can download it from the URL that you see on the screen right now. I will have a link in the description below from which you can grab the download file for Raspberry Pi OS. And I will also have it linked in the wiki article that you can also find below. That wiki article will contain all the links that you see in this video as well as the commands that I'm using to build this device. Now specifically, I decided to go with the light version of Raspberry Pi OS. And the difference there is that the light edition has no GUI. So it's often the case when you are setting up a server, or an appliance such as this that you'll omit the GUI from the build to save CPU cycles. Now there's nothing wrong with installing the desktop edition of Raspberry Pi OS if you want to. Everything I'm going over in this video will still work if you do that. But I'm using the light edition, which is why you will not see a graphical user interface while I set it up. When you download Raspberry Pi OS, it'll come in the form of a zip file. 
You can put that aside after it's done downloading because you'll also need to download a utility that you can use to basically flash that image onto an SD card properly. And I like to use USB Imager for that purpose. And the reason why is because whatever your operating system is on your laptop or desktop, the device on which you are downloading Raspberry Pi OS and preparing your SD card, you can use USB Imager with your computer because it supports Mac, Linux, and Windows. It's the same utility on each. So I can go over one utility, and regardless of your operating system, the process will be mostly the same. So you just download USB Imager for your specific operating system. As for me, I downloaded the Ubuntu version, and that's what I installed. On my Pop! OS laptop, I just used the built-in package installer to install the package after I downloaded it. And after I installed it, USB Imager was available in the Applications menu, so I launched it. And then I clicked on the three dots to select the Raspberry Pi OS image that was downloaded earlier. And finally, I clicked on the Write button. I typed in my password for approval, and I waited until it was done flashing. It didn't take long at all for that to be written, and then it was all set. Now, I do recommend that you enable SSH. It just makes remote access even easier. And you can do that by creating a file called SSH and saving that in the boot directory of the SD card. So basically, after you write the OS image to the SD card, you eject the SD card, reinsert it, and you should see a volume that is called boot. And in that volume, just create an empty file called SSH with no file extension at all. And what that will do is cause Raspberry Pi OS at first boot to turn on SSH, and then you can use SSH to connect to the Raspberry Pi, and that's how we're going to configure the Open Media Vault software as well as the tweaks for the operating system. Once you're all set with the SD card, set it aside for now. We'll come back to it. Let's go ahead and unbox the case, and then we'll put it together. So, here's the Argon 1 M2 in the box. I'm excited to check it out. Before we do, I'll go ahead and see if I can give you a closer look at the box. So, nothing too exciting. And we're going to go ahead and open it. So we have this quick start guide right here. Nothing too out of the ordinary, just basically tells you how to set it up. But I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Here we have the actual case. It's in there pretty tight. It's kind of like a, uh, it's like a stretchy bag. We have the Argon One M2 case right here. So we have the top layer. I think it looks very sleek and almost futuristic. It's definitely an awesome looking case. We have what I believe is a daughter board. This goes into the Raspberry Pi. We also have this USB dongle. And actually what this is going to do, if I can even get it to focus, is this is actually going to attach the bottom layer to the top layer, which I have to admit is really not my favorite aspect about this case, but I guess if it works, it works. But that also means that we are limited to USB bus speed as well. So there's that. We have some hardware here in the baggie. And we have this right here, which is the bottom layer of the case, which is where you can insert the M2 SSD. It's a USB port here on the bottom. And, well, that's pretty much all there is to it. In addition to that, I also have this right here. And this is for those of you that already own the Argon One case. 
but for whatever reason, at first you didn't decide to get the bottom layer with the M.2 SSD. This is essentially an upgrade that'll give you that functionality. So you don't have to buy a brand new case just to get that. Oops. And I'm a bit clumsy, but of course we have the same little attachment there in that box. Quick start guide again. And of course we have the same bottom layer here, the same one I just showed you. So again, if you bought the Argon 1 case without the M.2 bottom half, then you can actually upgrade. And I plan on doing that with my retro pies because maybe it'll just make more sense to store the ROMs on the M.2 SSD. So I'm going to be upgrading those, but there you go. That's a possibility if you already own an Argon 1 case. Now for the purposes of this video, I purchased a cheap SSD, and to be honest, I didn't really buy the fastest one. I just wanted something relatively cheap. So I have this one right here. It's 240 gigabytes. But I bought a few of these. I plan on upgrading other devices around the studio. And here's one already out of the package. And it's pretty straightforward to install the SSD into the case. You have a black screw that would normally be right here. I've already removed it off camera. It was actually hard to remove it without also removing the standoff that's underneath the screw. So I took care of that off camera as well. And the standoff is important because you don't want the SSD to touch the board. So you basically just slide the SSD into the slot. And this is the screw right here. I'll just set this in place. I'll screw it down. And that's about it. As you can see, it's nice and snug. So here I have the I.O. board. It came with the case. And then here I have, of course, the Raspberry Pi. So what you want to do at this point is just line up the headphone jack, just like this. And very carefully, you want to just nudge that in. There is a little bit of resistance here, so, so I don't want to use too much force. But I had to nudge it along a bit. And we should be good. Now, before we actually insert the Raspberry Pi and the I.O. board into the case, we want to make sure that we have the SD card inserted first. Because, unfortunately, there's no exposed SD card slot on the case itself, which is, in my opinion, not a very good thing. So just make sure that you've done that already. And then next we have these thermal pads that come with the case. There's two of them. So what you want to do is remove the plastic from one side. And then you're going to place it on the Raspberry Pi. And then also make sure you remove the plastic from the top as well. In my original review for the Argon 1 case, I forgot to do that. And somebody pointed that out to me in the comments. So don't be like me. Make sure you actually remove the plastic from both sides. And then we're going to do the same thing again with another one of these thermal pads. There's two of them. And this time we're actually going to place it right here. And then of course, remove the plastic from the top as well, which is actually a little hard to get to. And I have the thermal pads there on the Raspberry Pi. So now we can insert the Raspberry Pi and the IO board into the case. So here we have the top layer of the case. And then right here we have the GPIO pins. And then we have the GPIO pins here on the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to make sure that everything is lined up, especially the back. We're going to basically slide everything in. Then you want to make sure that the GPIO pins here are lined up. It's hard to see in the camera. You don't want to force it if it's not actually going to fit. Just 
Gently nudge it in there. And everything appears to be secure. So now what we can do is secure the board to the case. And you're going to do that with the four shorter screws. And here we have the two screws that come with the case. One is shorter than the other. And you are going to use the shorter one for this step. You'll need four of them. And I'm just going to place them where they go. So we need one right there. Also right here. Up here. And down here. So I have one here, 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 and here. Just make sure they're all tightened. Don't want to over tighten them. And that should be all there is to it. The board is secure. So next we're going to grab the top layer and the bottom layer, and we're going to join them together. And as you can see, pretty self-explanatory. Just kind of sets on there. And then we have the longer screws. We're going to use them to secure the two pieces together. And here we have the finished product. So already a couple of things I don't like about it. Again, the SD card slot is not exposed anywhere. So if I wanted to change the SD card, I'm going to need to disassemble this unit. I did already attach the rubber feet to the unit as well. That basically stops it from slipping. And now that we have the bottom layer and the top layer connected, it's not going to be able to use the M2 storage yet because we need this dongle right here to essentially marry the two together. And we just attach it like that. And as you can see, it's essentially a USB dongle that connects the USB port here on the top, basically the Raspberry Pi, to the bottom layer. And what I don't like about that is it still looks like I have a flash drive on the back of the Raspberry Pi. And yeah, the bottom layer is going to give me an actual M2 SSD in here. So this is going to make the connection possible, but I still think it's a little weird to have this sticking out of the back, which looks like a flash drive when I'm not even using a flash drive, but it's just cosmetic, it doesn't matter. But I do like the fact that we have full HDMI ports here, which is pretty cool. I don't really mind the smaller HDMI ports on the Raspberry Pi, but full-sized HDMI cables are easier to find, so I really like that they did that. And we have the USB-C connector for power here, headphone jack, the remainder of the USB ports, Ethernet, and of course we have our power toggle. We can power on the unit with this button here. And we could also enable safe shutdown, which I'm going to show you how to do. After you power on the Raspberry Pi for the first time, I recommend that you install all the latest updates, set the host name, and then reboot the unit. So basically, we have a few tweaks to do. First, you can SSH into the unit by finding its IP address. For me, I just looked at the DHCP lease list inside my firewall. It showed up there with a host name of Raspberry Pi. So I copied the IP address and I used the SSH command along with the username of Pi and the IP address to connect to the unit. And the default password is simply Raspberry. To set the host name, I first edited the Etsy hostname file and on my end, I set it to a fully qualified domain name as you see here. But you don't have to have a domain name though. 
You can shorten it down to something like OMV if you want, or whatever you want to call it. And then I went ahead and edited the Etsy host file. So basically, just make sure that the host name is the same here as it was in the file that we've edited earlier. After that was done, I ran sudo apt update ampersand ampersand sudo apt dist upgrade. And what that command will do is chain two commands together, the first of which will update the list of available updates and the second will go ahead and install those updates. And the last process that I went through for OS setup was I ran sudo raspy config. That opens up the configuration menu for Raspberry Pi OS. And in there, we can set up some additional tweaks. First, I accessed the localization options. Then the first option in that menu, locale. The locale defaults to ENGB UTF-8. And you can leave it as that if that's correct for you. But on my end, it needs to be changed. That's not what my locale is here in the United States. So I deselected that by highlighting it. And then I press space to remove the asterisk. Then I scroll down. I looked for ENUS UTF-8, which is the correct setting for me. And then I press space to add an asterisk to that field. And I'll have a link down below for a list of locales. If you don't know what yours should be, you can find it from that list. There's a bunch of them, so I can't go over them all. Just check that link if you don't already know. And then I pressed enter to confirm my changes, and that was all set. Next, I went back to localization options, and this time to time zone. You definitely want to make sure that you have the correct time zone for a NAS. In that menu, I selected America and then Detroit, which is correct for me. Just set it to whatever yours should be. And then once all of that was done, I decided to reboot the Pi so that all the changes I made would take effect. And to reboot, I simply ran sudo reboot. After the Pi has had a few minutes to reboot, the next thing that I recommend you do is to install the safe shutdown script for the Argon 1 case. You only need to do this if you are using the same case as the case that I'm using. If you are using something else, then don't complete this step. Now what this script will allow you to do is hold down the power button on the back of the case for a few seconds, and that'll trigger it to actually shut down. And that's certainly better than having it abruptly power off. Hence the term safe shutdown. Now on my end, I switched to root to run this command, probably out of habit. And then I ran the install command, the command that you see on the screen right now. And that was the only command that I needed to run in order to set this up. That's all there is to it. With all of that done, it's finally time to install Open Media Vault. Now, installing Open Media Vault actually takes quite a bit of time. The process is a little bit on the lengthy side. But even though it's lengthy, there's only one command to run, and the rest is just a waiting period. You run the command that you see on the screen right now, and again, it'll be in the wiki article as well if you prefer to copy and paste it. And once you kick that off, you basically just go grab a coffee and then come back later, and it should be done. Once the script has completed, you should be able to access Open Media Vault by typing in the IP address or host name of your Raspberry Pi in the address bar of your browser. And the default username for the web console is admin, and the default password for that is Open Media Vault. And once you log in, you can go ahead and set up your disk in the Open Media Vault GUI. And to do that, you can go into the disk section in the left-hand menu, and you should see the SSD in the list. Then you can click on the wipe button, and that should ensure that the SSD is completely wiped out and ready to be used. After that, you can go to the file system section and create a new file system for your SSD. So click on create, select your SSD from the device dropdown, Leave it on ext4 unless you prefer something else. And then the SSD should be formatted and ready to go.
Then, you can click on the Mount button to make the SSD available for use within OMV. After I formatted the SSD, I created a few shares in the Shared Folder section for a test. I also went into Services and enabled the services that I wish to use with my shared folders, for example, Samba and NFS. And once you do that, you should be able to go to the file manager of your operating system and access the server from there. You should be able to see the shared folders inside your file manager window if all has gone according to plan, and then be able to save your data into those folders. I'll leave it up to you to configure your Open Media Vault the way you like it, but it's pretty straightforward. You simply create the shared folders. You set the level of security that you want on those folders. Maybe you want something wide open, and maybe another shared folder that's more private. It's up to you. And then you should be able to access those folders from other computers on your network. Now, on my end, in Pop! OS, I had to manually type snb colon slash slash and then the host name of the Pi for it to actually show the shares. But as soon as I've done that, I was able to access them. So there you go. If everything has gone according to plan, you should have your very own Open Media Vault build like I have here powered by a Raspberry Pi, a really awesome case, and SSD back storage. This is an awesome build, and I really enjoyed putting it together. Now, it probably goes without saying, or at least I hope it does, this build only has one SSD. So if that SSD was to fail, you would lose everything. So definitely make sure that you have everything backed up somewhere else. That's just a good practice anyway. You don't want to have all of your important files and documents and things on one device. Definitely have everything on this that's important copied over to somewhere else. Just keep that in mind. But I really enjoyed putting this together, and I hope you enjoyed this build as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I have some awesome videos coming very soon, so make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.